So welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed the first video of me putting up the first stages of the barn, the oak frame. Um, in this video I shall be doing the apex which is the basically the A-frame that sits on top of the cross beams. Um, a little bit of reinforcing work and um, yeah just taking it to the next level really up to the roof. So no further ado I shall get started. Bye for now. So I've just took a moment to assess the situation. This cross beam here needs a bit more strength. So before I put the A-frame section on top, what I'm going to do is reinforce underneath with some new timbers just to give that a bit more strength and integrity to hold up the rest of the, uh, the roof. I think I've cracked it. That means I've got an idea. Let's get going. So this is the cross beam that I need to reinforce a bit. It's had a bit of woodworm in it, but it's still perfectly usable. A little bit of extra strength with the new timbers, that'll be just fine. I've just got to work out a way of doing it in such a way that it reinforces it without it looking too ugly. Now what I'm doing here is just putting some nails in each side just as an extra pair of hands really. It's always, it's always good to do that when you're working on your own. So that way I can put the timber through without having to hold it myself at each end. That's the theory anyway. So what I've just done to each end is just marked a, a pencil mark on it. I've got the correct angle then for the upright beams. I'm going to take this one out, cut it to suit, and it's kind of going to fit underneath there. And then I'm going to put another one in situ like this one next to it, fix them together, and that will be a really strong, strong cross beam then. Next, me extra pair of hands. <laughs> This knee brace here is sticking forward slightly more than the other one. So what I'll have to do on this timber, I've marked it. I'm going to have to chase a little bit out of that with the skill saw and some chisels. Just so it accommodates and sits under here nicely. Here goes. On closer inspection, there's more integrity in this knee brace than there is with cutting this down to allow for that. So instead, I'm going to cut this back so this doesn't have to be cut. It's that wide in oak, so that could have a little haircut and it wouldn't make no difference. It'll still do its job. So let's get the big guns out. have a little trim up with the chisels yeah lovely job I think that's enough it can always take a little bit more out it's very difficult to add it So yeah, that's gone in really rather well. That's flush with that face there. So what that will allow me to do now is put an additional timber on here, bridging that one and that one and connecting that one together. So interlocking the whole corner of this, strengthening this up. So yeah, job well done. It's amazing what you can do on your own, just a little bit of fault. Simple basic methods, straps, clamps, nails. Nice. There you can see I've done the same that side. 
So I've just pre-drilled these holes ready for the nails to go in. Because it's in oak, I've pre-drilled it. Now, this cross section is going to get fixed to this knee brace and that will just give it extra strength from like wind deflection and a movement like that. So it just ties, starts to tie the structure all together. So let's do some hammering. Yeah, it's really starting to feel a lot more rigid now. Which is always a good sign. Right, I shall probably repeat the same as I've done this side for the other side. Won't know until I get over there what I actually need to do with it, so just move the scaffold in and get set up that side. Make some more progress. So I'm on the other side now, I've pre-drilled this, just going to stick some nails in there and then trim the end off afterwards. That's often the easiest way to do this. That's not easy though. I'll say the oak is like iron, I've pre-drilled this. It's bending the nails over so I'll probably just round that over and put a bolt in there. All right, let's go find a bolt. Have I introduced you to my nosy neighbours? Hi, girls. <laughs> this time of year we get a lot of hornets flying about. They're after the, the wood shavings and things, I think, for their nests, so. I had to stop work a minute ago because it was a very friendly one. A bit too friendly, so. If you want a stronger joint, stagger the fixing so they're at a diagonal. That way you've got a better, a better grip, really. Uh, it braces it a lot more. So if you do it dead straight, it's okay. But if you stagger them, it's a stronger joint on something like this. Trim that off after. Right, over to the other side. So it's pre-drilled. I've just put my bolts in. I'm going to ratchet them up, get them nice and tight and strong. Now these timbers form the outer perimeter of the floor that I'm going to put in this. So it's serving two purposes. It's strengthening the top beams, especially that one over there that had some rot in it. So I'm also going to create a floor area. Who knows what we might do up there, I don't know. <laughs> but it's going in. Nice and secure. Take the clamps off. Let's carry on. So once I get this piece on and the cross piece, should be able to just fly along with, <laughs> with the floor joists. So uh, yeah, it's just getting these secured and Nice and strong, it's worth it, take your time, you know. You don't want to come through the floor after all, dear. These other timbers are very crooked. Absolutely spot on. The race is on to get it finished before the summer gets here. So we can actually enjoy it. I'm already enjoying the Pergola Cottage Garden area, as you've seen on recent videos, so that was a great project. Thanks to everyone that donated to help me do that. It's much appreciated. And all those that just follow me and just watch me. Keeps me going. One more to go. So I'm just finishing the perimeter for the floor joists. Getting them all bolted in, nailed where appropriate. So yes, yeah, coming along really good. Nice and strong. So if you was to make something yourself, the principles are still the same with the angles and the uh, cross bracings and things like that. It doesn't have to be made out of oak. Uh, you can use cheaper materials, pine. You'll get the same finish. Uh, the principles and techniques are the same. Basically a square that needs bracing all the way around. So uh, yeah, if you fancy having a go, just give it a go. What you got to lose?
Even watching this is better than watching the TV sometimes, ain't it? <laughs> Unless you like repeats. So I'm just going to get a fix in into the side of this. A pretty solid fixing. Right, safe to take that off now. So that's the perimeter for the floor joist in. Now what I'm going to do is start putting the cross pieces in. So we're not far from getting the structure for the floor ready. So yeah, let's go for it. So what I've done here, pre-drill, got some screws ready. What that's going to do is going to temporarily get fixed under here. I'm going to mark it out where the cross pieces are going and fix these underneath. It's just like an extra pair of hands again while I'm down the other end. So that'll get moved along. The joist will just sit like that. So I know it's in the right place. Unscrew that and move it along. A beautiful evening not too hot i'm in the shade now so it's an ideal time to work for me so this area here i've doubled up there's two lengths of 6x2 there to support this beam so now i'm just going to pin the two together so in effect it's like a 6x4 beam going through there so again Fix them at the diagonal and go in slightly at an angle. One offset at a different angle. You have a very good fix in then. A lot of strength in those two now. Right, without further ado, I shall start working my way backwards. Let's get this done today, the floor that is. So if I've got my measurements right, should go in, he says. What could possibly go wrong? Look at that, I didn't even need them cleats. And on the matter of running your eye down and looking at the timbers, if there's a slight bow in the, in the timber, it's called a crown, always put that on the top because naturally gravity and other forces will push that down and eventually it will level off a bit. So always if you've got a crown in a timber, top side up. So my plane's just about to land in my private airstrip behind the house. <laughs> no, not really. Right, my battery's about to go flat on my phone. My batteries are getting a little bit flat now. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Just hanging out with the neighbours in the morning. <laughs> morning, girls. Better? That isn't me, it's the cats. <laughs> Right, I'm now at the point where the scaffolding is in my way. I'm coming through with the floor joist, so this has got to go. And once I get the floor up, I can stand on that and do the A-frames or erect one of the towers to each end. So they've got to be moved. There's only one way to do it, and that's to get it done. Let's go. Right, scaffold moved. If you're ever working off the scaffold, just take time to level it off before you start going too high. It's not too important when you're working low down, but an inch or so gets amplified once you start going up level. So put one base down, 
one section, level it off properly, make, it, make sure it's nice and sturdy on the ground so in that way once you work your way up you know it's not going to start leaning over so all right that's one one put that end i'm going to put one the other end then i'll work off my ladders through the floor joists i can't use my power tools because it's still early in the morning so a bit of hydraulic action is needed another important factor to consider when you're refurbishing an older structure if it's you know if you're if you're thinking about the timeline um, you can add a little bit extra on because it always takes longer you know but this project was never about time or um, a cost really it was more about preserving the the history and the fabric of this property it was collapsed we had to rebuild it yeah there's a lot of uh, rotten bits and pieces on here that I'm going to have to strengthen and uh, put in you know recycled or even new timbers in but the actual fabric of the barn is now preserved yeah it takes a little bit longer but hey ho if it was easy everyone would do it <laughs> so because I'm using six inch nails I've pre-drilled where they're going um, normally you don't have to pre-drill for nails but because they are this long just helps to get them started there's plenty of sort of length on there and plenty of material so ready to so crack that nail in it's as easy as that that's the village church bells going it's telling me I've got to stop and have a cup of tea I think <laughs> So I've just finished installing the suspended floor joists for the first floor basically. So they've all gone in okay. So my next job is to put the two end A-frames up. That's what's going to support the top ridge beam which is the uppermost triangle if you like on a roof. Yeah, good progress. Hope you've all enjoyed it up till now. I have. Looking forward to getting this watertight. So now the floor's all in, uh, I've just got to obviously put the floorboards on top, that will give me a safe um, level to work off and then I can start putting up the A-frames. That's what you'll see me doing next, putting those up, getting the ridge timber through the middle and that will be the basic outline shape of what I'm going to work with. So it's quite a large base, I don't know whether it looks as big as it does on camera. It's over. I'd say at least three metres square each way, so nine square metres inside, that's okay. Enough to sit out the rain in, have a few glasses of something nice, so yeah. Right, stay tuned and watch me do the A-frames. Now when you're using boards and sheet material on joists like that even, make sure you haven't got an overhang where it doesn't meet the next joist because that's what they call a trap. For obvious reasons, you stand on that and it goes, so. I'm about to explain further what a trap could look like. So basically, this piece here is unsupported. It doesn't reach this part. So you could put two fixings in there and some temporary cross pieces underneath. A bit too time consuming for what I want to do, so. What I'm going to do is take the board and run it across. So by putting the board across the floor joists, as you can see, there's no hidden traps. So for this instant, that would be the best way to go with this. Whew. Let's just get my breath back. I ain't getting no younger. Right, just a. A moment to say thank you to all those that have subscribed liked supported the channel and all those kind donors that have bought me a coffee and joined the uh the membership where you can uh, you can donate uh, a monthly amount um, so yeah what i'll do i'll put the names up at the end of the video um, because my memory isn't very good and i won't be able to remember all the names so 
I uh, just want to take this uh, this moment just to say thank you to everyone. Uh, you've been very kind and I, I really do appreciate it. It's helped me keep these uh, projects going. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's bought materials, uh, joists, flooring, fixings and all stuff like that. You know, none of it, as you're probably aware, isn't cheap nowadays. So yeah, it really does come in handy. So yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. Much appreciated. So the next stage... I'm up on the top looking down on the cross beam that is going to house the A frame section of the top part of the roof. So these mortise pockets here, there's three of them, that's for the vertical. This one here goes straight up, and the two each end are for the diagonals. So the tenants will fit in there, um, some of them have broken and rotted off a bit so as long as they're located in the right pockets I can put extra fixings in so that won't be a problem. And it's the same with the other side. The A-frame which is patiently waiting for me down on the ground. That will be coming up to here. And I'll go slowly for all those that get vertigo. And those sections down there, looking a bit sorry for himself, but once they're back in situ, they'll look a million dollars. Like I say, they're worn, they've got a bit of rot in them, but they'll still do their job. So that was the main objective with this, with this uh, project, was to was to keep it standing and hopefully I've done it justice at the end and it will carry on standing for another hundred years. Right, so it don't take me that long, put it up. <laughs> now the main centre post I'm using this end would have originally been the centre main post. There was three bays, what they call bays. I've reduced mine down to two because there's quite a bit of rot and I couldn't have a free section. But unfortunately, uh, the only upright that I could save was the middle section. Now, for obvious reasons, it isn't tailor-made to go on the end. So I'm about to find out whether or not I can adapt this upright post. It's that post there. So I'm about to put it into position and see how I can adjust it and make it to fit. Well, it's in. Yeah, we can we can work with that. I shall make some adjustments, maybe. I'll check for level. It's certainly a good start. So I've got it in position, temporarily braced and strapped. Just the other side, the diagonal. And I think we can adapt that. So this is it from the other angle, the other side. There we go, fit for purpose, I'd say I've just got to get the other cross piece from that corner up to the top of that post, we'll get some fixings in there, we'll move over to the other side. So I'm going down that end now, so I've just got the other section on, and it's okay. We've got some adjustments to do. It's not going to be dead level on all sides because the... Beg your pardon. <laughs> that wasn't my stomach, by the way, although I am getting hungry. So, yeah, we're in, uh, we're in luck with this one. They fit in the pockets. So the two A-frames, left and right, are both in position. It's ready to accept the top ridge beam, which I'm about to put in. It's this long top beam that joins the two A sections together. Now I've just trimmed the end of this up. That'll be cut out in a minute, that, that bit of rot there. I've cut it a bit longer. So that's ready. Here goes.
Anyway, don't that look grand? Okay. The ridge beam is in position, leveled off. I'm now going to start to fit it out with some new timbers to increase the strength and brace it all up. So I've gone as far as I can with the old timber beams. Now the rest will be um, timbers that I've already um, some in stock, some will be bought new. So I'm about to start fitting the inside area of the roof out with some new timbers, get some cross bracings on, and then I'll work around the whole whole structure and uh, yeah, start strengthening it. Right, let's go and see what Sean's been up to. Well, I think you'll agree it's looking rather splendid. That's the framework up. Now the top ridge beam is in place. It just needs a little bit of trimming up on the edges. There and there. And then I shall start fitting out the inside of the roof with new timbers. I'm going to use as many old timbers as I can and recycle them. But there does come to a point where you do need to buy some new lumber to get yourself going. Um, the floor's in. I've got some sheets that I've had from previous jobs left over. So that's going to put a floor in across there. Now, all the new timbers that you see on this build. I've managed to purchase these with the kind donations through Buy Me A Coffee and uh, all those other people that have joined as members. It's really helped um, get the, the project to this stage. Um, I know it seems like it's a, it's a, long, a long journey but it's made all the easier when you can just go out and buy the timbers and things that you need. So uh, the names of all those kind people will appear. So I'm just going to take you up to the top and give you a, a better view, a close up of what I've been doing. Hello again. I've gone up in the world. <laughs> right. Let's show you what I've been doing up here. Firstly, this is the view that I'm after taken advantage of up here. I think you'll agree it's lovely. I just see myself sitting down here with a, a nice glass of ice cold cider that's made from all them pears and apples out there so yeah it's rather fitting. Right just got to watch me step because I haven't fully clad the, the floor out yet. This is just a temporary fix at the moment. I've got to put some pegs in there. The original ridge beam is up and I'm just putting some extra bracings in underneath. Down there and down there. These will be coming off. I'm not a plan to do inside the A-frame pieces. I've got to be careful how I step back here. If you hear a yell I've fallen. Right, so yeah, I'm going to infill those sections there. Not sure what we've yet. I'll have a look around and see what I've got. I've got some flooring sheets to go down on the base here. And I think I'm going to have a little ladder. Not this one, but a drop down ladder. To access up here. So when you're up here you get a lovely view, nice and peaceful. Maybe a couple of chairs or a hammock up here about that. If any of you have got any ideas what to do with the roof, 
I'll be interested to hear your comments. So yeah, let's see what we can do with that, eh? So that concludes the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learnt a few things maybe along the way. And join me next time when I shall be constructing the roof. Hmm. Still thinking how to do that one, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. Bye for now.